As Pablo's immense talent became more obvious, Jose decided he belonged in a more distinguished academy, this time in Spain's true art capital, Madrid. <laughs> So in 1897, for the first time, the 16-year-old Pablo was on his own. He now stood face to face with the masterworks of Goya, Velázquez, and El Greco. But Madrid lacked the vibrance and modernity of Barcelona, and the rigid atmosphere at the academy left Picasso feeling stifled and bored. He was miserable. Academic painting was dead for him. He could, he could master, he could be a master of academic painting, but he knew that it had nothing more to do with uh, the life he lived. In March 1907, Picasso bought two primitive Spanish carvings. He later said he felt the figures gained a mystical power over him. Picasso felt a spirit awakened in him, like a message from the ancient world and it would permanently reshape his art. Now he isolated himself in his studio. He had an idea for a painting unlike anything anyone had ever done before. He had recently been to see the new collection of African art at the Trocadero Museum. The simple forcefulness of these figures inspired him to make something equally rough and raw. And in this painting, which came to be known as Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, Picasso sought to forge a link between tribal art and modern art. For him, the Demoiselle was the way to put in his painting what he had learned from Gauguin and also what he had learned from uh, Cezanne. But he wanted to, to make a primitivist painting, but also a painting against uh, what he saw of the civilization of the life. Picasso never expected the conservative French public to understand Les Demoiselles. He felt certain, however, that his friends, the painters and poets of the avant-garde, would appreciate it. But one by one, they came and stood before the painting in horrified silence. Even his artist friends didn't understand it at all. It was obviously so different from what people thought was beautiful, desirable, understandable. It's hard to explain now uh, how extraordinarily different it looked because we are all used to seeing so many reproductions. But at the time, I think it was just totally incomprehensible. Picasso's fellow painter, André Duran, predicted his humiliation would be so great it would lead to suicide. Picasso would be found hanging behind the canvas. Even his most loyal patron, Leo Stein, called the painting a horrible mess. Picasso felt himself left behind by his uh, comrades. He wanted to make, a, to make a break, it's true, but he didn't want a scandal. Picasso had created the most innovative work since the Italian Renaissance. But for now, he turned the painting to the wall. It would be nearly 10 years before he showed the painting to anyone again. But the significance of Picasso's breakthrough was not lost on everyone. Late in 1907, Georges Braque was a well-known follower of Matisse. But on seeing Picasso's new work, he defected. Picasso and Brock found that they shared a vision. They saw that the world had changed more in the last decade than it had in centuries. Life in the new era was mechanized, industrialized, psychoanalyzed. Cinema was replacing theater, and photography threatened to make much of painting obsolete. Picasso and Brock were tearing the old rules of painting to pieces, literally fragmenting the traditional image. They started with landscapes. This one by Brock. This one by Picasso. Together, the two envisioned a way to break down the principle of perspective that had ruled painting since the Renaissance, in which objects were seen receding into the distance. Instead, they brought their subjects right up to the surface. They showed that seen through the human eye, which flits from object to object, the world is a fragmentary place, 
made up of glimpsed reflections, splinters of light, and surfaces that are not smooth. Together, Picasso and Braque were inventing cubism. His collaboration with Braque, of course, is the single most significant event in his entire career. Cubism remained the high point of Picasso's originality, and the consequence was all of the rest of 20th century painting was transformed by it.